another Software Snack Time snippet presented by Extivia. This is the second in our multi-part series on IBM Audit, Myths, Pitfalls, Tips, and Tricks. We're joined today by the CEO of the Stones Division at Extivia, Amir Shalev, and the Director at ITAA, Kun Dinyoung. So with that, let's get into some more myths and pitfalls. All right, our next myth or pitfall here. The IBM system will probably block me from using more than I purchase. This is a huge pitfall. You know, let's say that the number of software products that are protected by license key restrictions, you know, somewhere around 5% of all the products. So most of the products are unprotected and you can use as much as you can. You can buy 100 users and have 1,000 users. You can buy 200 PVU and use 2,000 PVUs. Nobody will stop you. IBM believes that you use the exact amount that you have purchased. And by that approach, IBM seeds the plan for a multi-million audit business. All right, our next uh, myth here. Upgrading or changing hardware has nothing to do with software quantities. This is a mega pitfall. If the last one was huge, this is a mega one. Okay. Uh, uh, and my favorite one, because these people, you know, puts dollar signs next to the words. And let's run an example. You purchased five years ago, one of the PVU of an IBM software. You pay at the moment 20K um, for maintenance. And you budget, this is what you pay, this is what you budgeted, $20,000 per annual uh, uh, maintenance. Now, due to a hardware change, you move to a quad core server. Let's, just for the example, this is a 280 PVU server. But you bought only 100, right? If IBM catches these small, tiny differences, you will get a bill of 252 thousand dollars a quarter of million dollars so you budgeted 20k you got a bill of quarter of million dollars this is like 1300 percent difference i'm familiar with people that lost their job for less so this is a good example of a surprising bill. IBM audit, and we have the calculation on the slide, but IBM audit will ask you to buy the missing 180 PVU and add to that, and list price, no discount, etc., and add to that two years of back maintenance. And bear in mind, this is a small example of a small change in a very small environment. Now, do the calculation, what is the exposure at your company? And how you can avoid from this unpleasant surprise. So first of all, from the related content box, download the after, um, the uh, upgrade tips. So download it, learn it by heart, and, and, and follow the tips. And second and more important, we have a button of book a meeting. Use that button, book a meeting with us. We will do, you know, a free meeting uh, uh, and assess your situation. We'll be happy to, to, to try and avoid these unpleasant surprises. All right, moving on to our next myth here. Non-production environments are free of charge. Uh, I can uh, talk about this one. So this is indeed a very common uh, misconception. A lot of Customers believe, you know, they have their production servers, and that's basically all they need to license. But uh, I always say the best um, starting assumption is that everything has to be fully licensed, unless you can find a reason that does not need to be fully licensed. 
So there are a few cases in which something can be free of charge um, or where you can buy a, a more inexpensive license to cover the installation. Uh, so a common uh, scenario with, that applies to all IBM products are the uh, hot, warm, and cold standby scenarios. So that, uh, that applies to uh, backups. So if you have a uh, production machine, then uh, a warm or a cold standby um, uh, installation that uh, functions as a failover can be uh, free of charge, whereas a hot standby is, uh, needs to be fully licensed. Um, so those definitions are, uh, are uh, somewhat ambiguous, but at least you know, that's one scenario where you can try to find free installations. And for other non-production machines, so development and test, by default, all of these needs to be fully licensed. Uh, what you can consider is that you know there's uh, there are non-production part numbers for some uh, products. For example, uh, for Cognos, there's non-production uh, uh, licenses. And another alternative you can consider is a different metric. So um, you could uh, license uh, for some products. You can license the production machines with PVUs. But then your development work, you buy authorized user licenses if uh, if that's li less expensive. But indeed, the most important um, source to use in all of these matters is the license information document. Those are the licensing rules that apply for each IBM program for each uh, version. Because there, uh, when there, when you do have non-production part numbers or you have a different metric, there you can find the exact rules that apply to any, let's say, uh, non-production use and what the, the limitations of that uh, uh, use is. Um, so overall, I guess, definitely a, a myth. Uh, non-production is not free of charge uh, by default. By default, everything needs to be fully licensed unless you can find a reason that can be either licensed differently or no licenses are required. Thank you for that. All right, our next myth here, we've just decommissioned a server, so we are safe. Yeah, that's another uh, yeah uh, important uh, myth to some extent. So indeed, when you do commission a server, that will have a positive effect on your compliance position. But you have there's some things to consider, uh, especially if you have the IBM license metric tool deployed. And I'll talk about uh, that uh, a bit later uh, in this webinar. Um, what happens in that tool is that a historic record of all of your uh, IBM software installations and the server they're running on. Um, those are all kept by ILMT. And uh, records of installations are not automatically purged when, um, uh, when servers are decommissioned. Now, there are settings where you can actually enable that automatic purging. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, servers will continue to be counted in that system even after they're decommissioned, unless you take action to make sure that they're no longer counted. Um, so just because a server is decommissioned or you have removed a IBM software installation is not sufficient. You actually have to check your, your ILMT uh, big fix reports to make sure that moving forward, those installations are no longer counted. Thank you so much for that, Kuhn. And thank you, Amir. That is all the time we have for this snippet. Please come back for the third part in this series where we're going to hear some tips and tricks from Kuhn. And uh, thank you for coming to listen today. We'll see you on the next one.